All right, today is the day and we have a few things Leviathan. Now I'm just going to put this video together because I've got some things, a lot of things, a mess in this place um, that I've got to get cleaned up. I have got water and gray tank storage ready to go onto the subframe for Leviathan. And I need to get these things out of the shop so that I can pull the tub off of Verite and get some work done on it. So we're going to jump in, take a look at uh, putting these tank trays together and another little modification to our suspension in the back of Leviathan as well. But anyway, let's jump in, take a look. Now the water storage for the Leviathan is all going to take place underneath the subframe. Like in most uh, motorhomes and RVs, a lot of these tanks are kept under seating, under beds, things like that inside the cabin. Well, we have a little bit of a problem with um, panels that are going to be part of the fold-out system. We're going to occupy a lot of that space. So we're going to hook all these tanks underneath the subframe between the two main rails of that subframe. So these trays are going to hold the water tanks and they're just going to be assembled from um, some folded sheet metal. I've got some uh, square holes cut in one side of the piece and some round holes in the other. So we're just going to put some carriage bolts in, put the round side of the carriage bolts on the inside. So whenever there has to be any work done, that's going to be accessed through these little holes. You don't have to run into the bolts on the inside. And also putting this vinyl on these holes so that when you have to uh, service plumbing or the pumps, you can reach through these holes without scratching your arms up, getting cut on the sheet metal. Now, once I get these trays done, we're going to insulate these trays as well to hold our water tanks. Just going to use some one inch styrene foam. This is just a home insulation foam. Put a piece into the bottom of the tray, then we can uh, put our tanks in and we'll insulate the sides later on after we get some plumbing done. Now we're going to be showing you two tanks here or two trays, I should say, and four tanks. This is the freshwater side. And I'm using two tanks. This is the only way I can find the right size tank or the right size capacity that we could fit in this vehicle is to use two tanks. And that's going to be a benefit a little bit as well. Each of these tanks came with pumps. So we got two pumps to go into the fresh water. Now the tanks are roto molded. And so these big fittings, they just leave the residue of the roto molding in them. If you want to use those big fittings, you just have to cut it out, punch it out. If you don't want to use it, nicely sealed for you. Now this is actually the gray water tanks. So we have larger fittings here coming in. Just some PVC adapting down to some barbed fittings because all of our hose is going to flip onto these barbed fittings. And we will show you how this large hose is also going to be feeding in from the toilet and the shower and the sink and also going to feed out to the drains. Now these drains for the fresh water and for the gray water tanks all go to the back bumper. And there are some valves built right into the bumper that you may have remembered. If not, I'll show you a little picture here, how that's going to work. Valves welded right solid into the bumpers and they will just be able to be opened up according to your disposal times right out of the rear bumper rather than climbing under for anything. A little bit smaller fittings on the freshwater tanks because we don't have any kind of particulate matter going through. So we'll be putting fittings in for drains, fitting it in through for supplying water into the cab, cabin, I should say. And then of course, fittings to fill the tanks. Now to fill the tanks on the fitting side, the fitting on the fill side, putting these T's in, because one of the things of having the dual pumps is that I'm going to be able to use those dual pumps to move water from one tank to the other. So on the gray water side here, we're going to finally get the tanks. They get the plumbing done, feed the lines through the sheet metal, and that'll be ready to start insulating that tank. A little more work in the plumbing on the fresh water side. Lots of lines. We got to have the longer lines to be able to feed throughout the cabin as well. We got from the bathroom onto the kitchen. Not a huge distance, but going to take a lot more line than the drain side. Push those lines around, get those tanks in place. 
Now what happens here is since you have the two pumps, each of these lines are gonna come out and then hook into a three-way valve. When that valve's in one position, it will uh, feed or supply the sink and other things into the cabin. And when it's in the opposite position, you can turn the pump on and it will just pump the water back into the opposite tank. So if you used your shower water up prematurely and you needed some water for the bathroom, you could use the kitchen water and just pump it across the bathroom tank. Like I said, this is a lot of it was taking place because finding the right size tanks to fit where I needed them with the most capacity, splitting the tanks as well. Later on when we do the install, there would be some bracing that goes between the tanks to keep them, those pans from flexing as well. Here's those lines just marked with blue and red, just so I know once these trays are in place, I don't have to trace those lines back where they came from. Once all the plumbing's done, the tanks are sitting in place, gonna drop in some styrene foam and use some uh, gap and crack filling, you know, house construction foam to kind of lock those blocks in place. Now this high density foam in the pink is uh, plenty stiff to hold any kind of movement of these tanks, even with the water slashing back and forth. And of course, gives us the insulation we need. There will be also on the insulation, we'll be putting some heating pads so that we can extend the campability, is that a word, campability? Season out, you can heat those tank, heat the tanks on a night when they might freeze. Oh, get these foam in place, use some expanding foam to lock the blocks in place, and then we'll have our insulation done. Now, last thing I'm going to show in this video, be, uh, before we actually can install these things, which we're not going to quite get to in this video, is adding a system to measure what's in the tanks. Now, they make some systems where you have drilled holes that have a little sensor that goes through and actually contacts the water and use a different system to uh, measure your level. This system is ultrasonic. You have these little pads that connect to a circuit board. The circuit board feeds electricity into these little ultrasonic transducers and they can measure the difference in their feedback by what's the density behind them. So it's just doing a comparative between these three sensors, one on the bottom, one on the middle, one on the top. And when it knows that there is less resistance on the top sensor, it'll check the middle sensor and be able to just gauge which one has less or more resistance, I guess, in the transducer going through a fluid on the backside of it. And this will get us to the point of being able to install these tanks. We're not going to get that, but that is putting the tanks together. Now we're going to do another little cover of some springs in the back. I had some air springs from a different project and I took them out and looked at them, but there's a little bit of a interference problem with the springs themselves and air springs are just not a good idea on an off-road vehicle. They limit the travel of the axle in the back. The axle can only drop the length of the airbags. And so unless you had some kind of a system that was able to allow the airbags to stretch out further or on some kind of a toggle system. They're just not quite as good. So I ordered up a set of uh, Hellwig um, helper springs. Now this kit comes with uh, just basically a leaf spring packet that's just going to be added on top of the existing leaf springs. And it's going to add the ability to put more load to reduce the compression of the original leaf springs. It doesn't increase your load capacity. That's always fixed by what the manufacturer because the strength of the frame and other things, but it does keep your vehicle more level when you do add more weight. And since this is going to be a pickup truck chassis and we're adding a bunch of weight that's going to be permanent, we want it to help it with these springs. Now you got these regular packets of springs that are getting added. Then they give you this little arched piece, a little, uh, spring that's kind of makes an arch over the bolts that actually hold the axle to the original leaf springs. That little arched piece will fit right over the top of that. So get the bundle packet, the packet of uh, leaves, 
bolt this little bracket on there, torque it down, and then we will take it out and put it on top of the leaf springs. The original leaf springs, that is. Now this set is a little bit longer on one end, I think just about two inches, so it's hard to tell. We're gonna measure it and find that, yeah, that one is a little bit longer. That's the end that's gonna go towards the back of the vehicle. And you bring it out, that one little arch spring fits over, like I said, the bracket that bolts to the axle. And then you take some U-bolts, go in there, bolt that right to the center, right by the axle. And then you're gonna add another set of U-bolts that go out onto the ends of this helper springs. These won't be tightened up too much right now because you can adjust how much lift you have on these helper springs by how much you tighten those down. And we won't be able to know that until we get our cab built and set up with this interior. Well, there you go. But I was hoping to get those tanks installed on the bottom of the subframe, but come to find out there is a little bit of an interference problem on the uh, gray water tanks. I have actually had to go and order another tank, just a slightly bit smaller. Um, one of those things, that's why we're building the prototype, solve these problems. But that smaller tank will be here. We can shorten up that bottom tray for the gray water tanks just a little bit, and then we'll get those things installed. Well, that little problem with the gray water tank is probably a great example of the problems that I tried to describe in the last video. That of trying to make a congruent video with this kind of a storyline of some kind of ending that would have been the climatic ending of putting that tray onto the subframe, if you call that climatic. But since we weren't able to get there, I guess we just get to see the work and the raw efforts of trying to build the prototype. But it has got me to thinking and I am probably going to adjust things a little bit in the new coming year. And that is that I'm probably going to drop the idea of having a video released on a certain date. And instead I'm gonna to try to focus on creating better videos in both quality and content so that there is more of a finish to some of the things. So I probably will not be saying Leviathan Tuesday or Arate Thursday or Friday, whatever that's become. And I'm just going to work around the schedule of when things get accomplished, they get posted to videos. And I hope that they are much better videos. Not saying that it won't be weekly. I'm hoping to keep to some kind of a schedule of getting videos up regularly. And these will come as they are completed as mentioned. Well, I hope as this year is closing, you all have a good Christmas and a happy new year. Well, I guess I shouldn't even have to say that yet because hopefully we will have videos out before the end of the year as well. Anyway, thanks for stopping by today. Come back, see us again.